Shalom. Call Hello Yahweh by Shema Washai. Bahashem Wakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners, and to the Aquath that are listening and learning. To you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolma from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another lesson in truth. And uh, this video is, is, uh, is called Louis Gohmert suggests federal agents were behind capital attack. And he's not just going to suggest it. He's actually going to present evidence that they more than likely were. And um, so I'm going to play this video. I'm going to try to play it uninterrupted, but I want to read a couple scriptures before because basically what's happening is you're witnessing the downfall of Esau Edom. You know, they've been made bare. Matter of fact, let's grab that. Because there's no more wisdom in te teaming, man. These people have been made bare. Uh, that's why they're trying to come against critical race theory, which, which, which should be called critical race history. Because it's not theory. Theory is something that, you know, that's unproven. That's a guess. These are these are factual historical events that shaped America, that shaped the nations, that shaped neighborhoods, that uh, created and destroyed people and created cultures and, and you know, and uh, created wealth for some and poverty for others. And you have groups of American, mainly Americans that look like him, that want this taken out of school. They want history removed from the things that they did because now what's come what's happening is Esau Edom is being bombarded with the truth about his past and is being taught to his children and his children they say as early as five years old well you know the scriptures did say that they would they, that the children would complain of ungodly fathers and that prophecy remember the, the scriptures are many fold and now that's, that prophecy is talking about Esau Edom. They are ashamed of their forefathers and what they've done. All right? But they're not too ashamed because you don't have all these Edomites that have millions and billions um, that they've inherited of stolen land, stolen property, uh, companies that were built upon slave labor, and et cetera, et cetera. They're not giving those companies back or giving, you know. So they're not too sorry. But... Uh, but this is Jeremiah 49 and 10, and it reads, But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. All right? So it's a wrap for them, man. They're, 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 that, you know, it hasn't gotten so drastic where they're not anymore, but it's in the mix. It's in the middle of happening. So I'm going to talk about a vantage point of three prophets, three disciples, who all saw or witnessed uh, Yahawashai all from their own vantage points, but the, vantage points, but they all saw the same thing. So basically, it's kind of like um, how you got, to, let's say that you got three or four witnesses that all witnessed the same thing, but I witnessed the, the event straight on, you witnessed the event from a side profile, another person wit witnesses it from the other side profile and another person to witness it from the rear. But we all see the same event. Now, everyone's story is going to be different, but yet the same. All right. And uh, and they match up. So that's something that the Hebrew Israelites, we call that precepting. Uh, Christianism and their leaders like Vocab Malone, Dr. James White, the Edomite, they call it Hebrew hopscotch. So uh, let me run to a scripture real quick. I'm going to read uh, Mark 3 and 25. And it reads. I'm going to start at 24. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against Satan, 
So like it, if Satan rise up against himself and he be divided, he cannot stand but have an end. And Satan is a man. As a matter of fact, before I play it, let's just shoot over to Isaiah, the uh, 14th chapter, 12th through the 16th verse, just to prove that for anyone who might be new or some Christianism person jumping on, you know, you always got some person that's new, either for the positive or the negative, but to make it clear that what we're saying is absolutely true. We're going to go to the scriptures. So yeah, that's Isaiah 14, and we're starting in verse 12, and it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? I wonder how a Greek word got into the Old Testament. All right? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation? So they will tell you that Satan, they'll say Lucifer is Satan, when it's not, this is a man. All right, a people, a race that this scripture is talking about. And it's going to, and as we continue to read, it's going to reveal that. All right, but in Christianism, they teach that Satan was being a hard head and rebellious and got kicked out of heaven. And that's complete and total bold face lie doctrine of man. The scriptures don't say that anywhere. In Job, uh, the first and second chapter, when, this, when the sons of God, meaning that the, the angels were called before Yahweh, the Most High God, Satan came also. Why? Because he's the Son of God. He's actually in heaven on the left-hand side, controlling left-hand side things. Because does it not say in Isaiah 45 and 7, you know, that the Lord creates the good and the bad, the light, if he creates good and evil. All right? And the right-hand side is controlled by who the world originally calls Christ. So who do you think the left-hand side is controlled by? All right? But uh, continue on with the reading, Isaiah 14, and it says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, above the Israelites, and I will sit upon the mount of the congregations in the sides of the north. The world is, was controlled from America, all right? Even though Britain has a grip and control over America, so does Israel, but the power was still distributed and the control was distributed from America. All right. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the most high. And so there he saw with his technology, with his space stations and his technology, he he's become godlike in his own mind. Until those chariots and their technology start showing up <laughs> and Esau realizes he's not as godlike as he thought. All right. Verse 15, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. You're going to be brought down to hellish conditions. And they that see thee, listen carefully, shall narrowly look upon thee. They're looking upon Lucifer. All right. And consider saying, is this the man? Is this the people? These white people? Yeah, that's what it's saying. Is this the man? That made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms. And yes, he did. He made the earth tremble since Alexander. All right. And then once he got, you know, up modern day with his bombs and his missiles and he had everyone in fear. Now the now the other nations that were weak are now strong. And now you got 23 nations that are bucking up against America. Some of those nations are other Edomites. These people are divided and in the midst of their fall. Um. Now, there's been so much appropriate concern about January 6th, what happened that day. Unfortunately, we don't know all that happened that day. There are some major, major questions that need to be answered. Uh, we know that the former chief of the Capitol Police testified that they got no intelligence from the FBI about potential violence on January 6th. And, you know, there were lots of stories about people that were here at the Capitol on January 6th that may have carried a Confederate flag, 
may have had red and MAGA or Trump, but the, there were Capitol Police that told me the day before, hey, we've heard there's going to be people that hate Trump that are going to be trying to blend in, and there is going to be violence, and we're concerned about it. But the chief of Capitol Police said they got no intel like that from the FBI. An article... Get a real-time bird's-eye view of your projects. Create project... A few days ago, um, from Revolver, says unindicted co-conspirators in the January 6 cases raised disturbing questions of federal foreknowledge. It's June 14th, and I saw a friend, Tucker Carlson, cover this uh, last night, but... This is really disturbing, and this is something that I know from my time here in Congress uh, has disturbed Democrats and Republicans alike across the aisle, because we don't like to see government agents stirring up trouble or find that there are criminal acts that would not likely have occurred had not the federal government been participating, hmm. whether they were actual agents or un undercover agents or informants that were working for the federal government. But this is scary stuff. This is, this is kind of third world stuff. This is not only third world stuff, but this is like Putin kind of activity. You know, so if there were federal agents that were involved on January 6th, we really need to know what the FBI knew and when they knew it. And not only that, we need to know how much participation did any of our federal friends either at DOJ, FBI, or any of the intel community, what kind of role were they playing? Because there's information that came out about the effort to uh, kidnap the Michigan governor, and there were federal agents. Uh, so it's been said there were federal agents that were involved in that. So and you hear that? And then what he tried to do, he tried to pass the buck and say, this is third world stuff. This is Putin stuff. No, you, and so look, America is the king of staged events, of false flag events. America is known. A lot of the events that have been written in the history books started off as live drills. A lot of drills they start drilling for. In, in the event that this happened, in the event that that happened, and all of a sudden it happens for real and it goes live. Some of the most major things in history, in recent history, happened just like that, including one of the most recent ones. So, you know, trying to pass the buck off like they don't do this, other countries do this, but not us, no. America set the standard for fabricated events and and basically and then these events get put into the history book and it's all a bunch of lies but this is uh the book of luke the 11th chapter and the 17th verse and it reads but he knowing their thoughts said unto them every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and a house divided against a house faileth falleth if Satan also be divided against himself, because Satan means human adversary. All right. So we're not talking about the spiritual, the angel, the messenger, Satan. We're talking about the human adversary, Satan, because just as it is, as yeah, as the who the world ignorantly calls Christ has uh, counterparts here on earth who are the children of God, the Israelites, the sons of the sons of, of, of Israel. All right, the sons and daughters of Israel. Satan has his counterparts too, which is Esau, Edom. 
the so-called white man or so-called white people. All right. The actual, you know, so-called Caucasians, the ones who really are, because there's some people who look Caucasian who are not. All right. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? But ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub, and if Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them? And therefore shall they be your judges? You see, because this man has set himself up to be a judge. And it's clear that they cannot. They can't even trust their own alphabet organizations. They all have their own agendas. But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. And that's what's happening. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The tabernacle of David is being set up. Something that Christianism tries to get around the fact that the kingdom of heaven can't come. And it cannot and will not come without the throne of David being established. And who's going to sit on the throne of David? Yahweh is going to, or who's going to set up the throne of David? Yahweh All right? Because Peter is going to sit on that throne. You know, Peter is David, if you understand the scriptures. But it's going to be set up, but the kingdom of David is going to be established through Yahweh All right? Who the world is going to call Jesus Christ. All right? And it says, when a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. And see, that's Esau Edom. He's been so strong, and now he's been made weak. And even if he could have the greatest army on earth, which he does not anymore, all right? But even if he did, that wouldn't help him against the power of heaven, against Yahweh Shai, which is, is, this is talking about in, in verse 22. But when a stronger, then he shall come upon him. See, when Yahweh Shai come, nothing that he has is going to help him. And overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor, wherein he trusted, and divided his spoil. So Esau Edom is getting ready to be robbed and spoiled and brought to naught. All right. So with that, you know, I hope this was an edifying and informative lesson. Call Halali Halbashim Al Shai, Bahashim, Wakakwadash, Wa Ababa Ball, Kwam Yasharala.